Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's Fast Tip is a developer tip, and it's not so much even a tip, it's I ran into a problem with a long-standing piece of code. I'm talking, I've had this piece of code working for at least a year without changing anything, and all of a sudden it stops working. It deals with moving and renaming files in Visual Basic. So this is a developer level video. And the problem is I ran into a file name with a non-standard character in it and VBA just refused to move or rename the file. And I'll explain why in this video. But if all that sounds interesting to you, keep watching. If not, I get it. This isn't really as much a, an access tip or trick as it is me sharing with you guys who work with VBA and uh, moving files and stuff around, uh, what my fix was for this problem, because it took me an hour or two to, to pull my hair out and figure this out. So uh, watch if you're curious. You guys said in the last poll you wanted more developer tips like this, so here you go. Okay, so the root of the problem stems around the routine that I use to import my user list from YouTube. Yes, they have an API for it, but I haven't taken the time to sit down and, and code for it properly to have my database pull it in automatically, blah, blah, blah. I know. So every day, every business day, Monday through Friday, I go on their website. It's literally two clicks, and I download this guy, all right, which is a simple CSV file, a comma-separated file, right? That's got the usernames, their user IDs, what membership level they're at, blah, blah, blah. And then I import this into my database. Right In my database, I tell it where my downloads folder is. I tell it what the file name looks like. It's usually sh shaped like this. It's your members and then some stuff and then CSV. Right, That's the format that it's always been in for the past year. I'm going to say maybe two years since I've been doing memberships. That's the format that it comes in. And what I do to make things easier is I simply rename that file to YouTube.csv because then I've got that linked into my database as a linked table. There's a linked table that goes right to C users Amicron downloads YouTube.csv. So this routine just renames the file YouTube.csv and it makes it much easier to import because now my import routine is just dealing with a linked table. Okay, so I can treat it like any other table in the database. The problem, and it just started a couple days ago, is this. I hit my import routine and I get file not found. And I know it's there. I'm looking at it. I can see the file is there. And if I debug, here's the actual line of code that renames the file. First, we delete the destination file if it exists. Then we check to see if the source file exists, right, using that criteria and a dir command. Dir will basically tell you if a file exists, and you can use wildcards. If it doesn't find anything, it says, oh, can't find it. You got to go download the file. If it does exist, Right, it slaps together the download folder and FN. Now the the dir command finds the file. There it is. You can see it, and it looks perfectly normal. Okay, but when I try to move that file, which basically is a, to rename a file, you use the move file command. You move it from one file to another. All right, it throws up file not found. So move file cannot work with this file. And once again, I remind you, this code has worked flawlessly for at least a year every day for a year and I haven't changed anything. So immediately, my, what is my thinking? Well, something has changed. Something probably on YouTube's end, they must have changed something. So let's examine that file name in more depth. Let's take a closer look at that file. First, I tried removing the commas and the underscore character. Okay, still didn't work. Then I tried chopping off computer learning zone thinking maybe the file name's too long, still didn't work. All right, then I chopped off the, the date and time and then it worked. All right, so then I brought it back and I tried chopping off just the time and it still worked. So there's something in or around this time value causing the problem, okay? So now it's time to loop through all of the characters in this file name and take a closer look at them and their ASCII key code values. All right, so then I wrote this little bit of code here that I inserted and basically we've got X is a long, SSS is a string, all right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from X equals one to the length of the file name. In other words, we're gonna, we're gonna loop down that file name. Start at the first character, second character, third character, and so on. 
and we're going to build a string showing the character at that position and its ASCII key code value, its CHR value. And yeah, for some reason on my computer, the mid function shows up like that. I don't know why, it always has. <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna take a look and see what that looks like when we run it. So now when I run it, click the button, boop, that's what we get. All right, so it's got Y89, O111, you, right, your members. Okay, I'll remind you what the file name looks like. There it is, right, your members. Come here, hold on. Get back there, okay. Okay, your members, February 19th, okay. 2023, okay, that looks fine. Let's see, M, A, M, okay, what's, okay, here's, it's, it's it's a little hard to read this way, but let's see. Okay, so there's the there's the O. All right, there's the underscore, which is a 95. All right, O, which is character 48. This is all in the ASCII key ch uh, character chart, by the way. All right, 8. All right, so we got 10 underscore 08. Then we got, what's this? 160. That's a guy that doesn't belong. 160. In fact, let me make this a little bit easier to read. Let me put um, let me put the ASCII code inside of parentheses like this. Make it easier for you to read it. Okay, that's easier to read. Okay. All right, you can see. All right, there's the AM. Right in front of the AM, there's a one sixty in there, and that's not a standard character. All right, you can see like, you know, capital Y is, a, is an 89. You can Google the ASCII key chart. And you'll see what I'm talking about with this stuff. Every, every character has its ASCII value, a numeric value. And 160 is not a, a normal character. So then I Googled it. What is CHR 160? Well, it's a no break space. So somehow, somewhere in YouTube's end, they, they, re, they replaced a normal space character with a 160. I think they did this just to mess with me. <laughs> okay, so there's a couple things you could do. You could try to use other techniques to rename that file. I thought of maybe uh, a, you know somehow running a, a little batch file to rename it. But then I thought to myself, you know what? If we go old school DOS, all right. Remember the eight dot three file name convention, all right? At old school DOS, you could only have eight characters for your file name and then three characters for your extension. Okay, so if you created a text file, what is text file? Text document. All right, you could have file name dot text. That was it. And if it got longer than that, when they switched to Windows ninety five, they allowed long file names for the first time. But if you looked at it in DOS. Right, if you had like, if this was Rick's file, Rick's, Richard's file, all right, Richard's file, now that's too long. So what you'd get was, you'd get the first six characters without spaces, and then tilde one. And that's how it would look. So underneath, even today with Windows 11, underneath the, the, the operating system, every file name still looks like that, and you can still work with that. So what we have to do is, and this assumes you've only got one of these download files in this folder. All right, if you've got multiple files, this ain't gonna work. But what you could do is we could chop off everything but the left six characters and put a tilde one after it and then try to rename that file. And again, you gotta get rid of spaces. All right, so I gave that a shot because I don't wanna have to manually go in here and rename these files every time I download them. All right, so let's get rid of this code because I know what the problem is now. All right, so then I wrote this lovely bit of code and yes, Make sure you do your your um, your commenting because five years from now I'm gonna forget all about this. Um, first thing we do is we replace any spaces in that file name with blank, so you got got to ignore spaces. Then we're gonna take the left six characters and after it put on a tilde one dot csv. Okay, because we know the file exists. Now we got to rename it to a dos eight dot three friendly, and of course. This also assumes that that character 160 is in a, a, a right side place of that file name. It's not gonna be in the first eight characters or first six characters. If it is, uh, you're, you're, then you're just screwed. Uh, <laughs> all right, so now full file name equals the downloads folder and whatever file name that is. And now I'm gonna put a breakpoint right there to stop the code. 
But now when I run it, click, all right, it gets to my breakpoint now. And if I look at the folder, look at that, it did the rename. Because with the DOS 8.3 con uh, convention, it was able to find the file and rename it for me. And now I have a solution and now I can relax. This happened when I was on vacation a couple days ago. The, the fiance and I took a little road trip up to Disney. And I'm like trying to import the days because every morning, you know, I do my daily stuff. I import my membership, so I do all that stuff. And uh, it wasn't working. I'm like, what the? So I had to manually rename the file and it worked. And I'm like, something's not right. So I got home and I played with it and that was the solution. If you want to learn more about this magic file IO stuff, I cover it starting in Access Developer 30. Uh, we cover classic VB file IO, reading and writing text files. Let's see, 31 covers... Uh, file and folder navigation, copying files, automatically compacting back ends. That's cool stuff. What else we got? FTPing files. Uh, okay. I, the, 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 yeah, I spent a lot of time on this stuff. The file system object. That's the more advanced stuff that you saw with the move file. And what else? I got? Yep, file system object lessons three to four. I got like six classes on working with files. And you, you, you might think you might not need it as access as a self-contained database. But if you do any work with other people's data, whether it's Excel or any other files that they want to give you that you want to import into your database, these lessons are, in my opinion, amazing. Of course, that's my opinion, but <laughs> all right, I hope that helps. So yeah, there you go. But I've seen this same thing happen with other uh, types of file names too. If you got file names with, with uh, with characters that aren't allowed in file names, like question marks and stuff. All right, you can, you can use a similar technique to just use the DOS 8.3 naming convention to work with that file. Again, assuming you only have one of them. If you got two of them, then it could be tilde two. So uh, if any of you have a better solution for this, let me know, post something in the comments down below. I thought of possibly trying to uh, you know, do it, do an import, import the lines, you know, using VBA read writes. But I tried this first and it turned out it was easier and it worked. I have a, a, a feeling though, that, um, that file IO re reading the file line by line isn't going to work either because if move, if FSO move file can't work with that file name with the 160 character in it, then I'll bet you that trying to read and write that file too is going to give me problems, but I didn't waste the time doing it. So go ahead and feel free to try it on your own. And uh, yeah, that's it. So there's your fast tip for today, my developer access friends. Live long and prosper, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming 
As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all. One dollar. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.